Hi guys, I'm Max and today I'm working on the bushings for the support on the lead screws. The way these work is we use this acetyl bushing here to go on the end of the lead screw to support it when it's uh, in one of the axes on the machine. It's a pretty simple process we're making on the CNC lathe. Uh, we can cut three in a, in a group before I have to clean some of the chips out of there. I'll go ahead and I'll show you how that works. Really all I have to do at this stage is close the door, hit start. Now that the cycle's finished, I can open up the machine here and fish out our cut parts. Right here. I can dump them in here so they can dry. An important step for us too when cutting plastics is we get a big bird's nest of uh, chips on here, have to pull this off. It's actually limiting the number of pieces we can cut in a cycle. With uh, too much of this, it ends up getting caught up on the work and destroying it. The next step for these is after these ones have dried, I can just put them on the drill here and do a little chamfer. And now they'll fit on the lead screws. Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy. Today I'm just going to introduce to you guys what we're testing here. Uh, we're currently testing a router motor to control the spindle speed for our machines. So I developed a small little program that'll send a speed, turn the motor on, and then after a time period it'll turn it back off. In order to get to this point, we had to do a lot of testing with the motor itself and map the speed curve with the uh, RPMs that are being sent to it from the expected output and the commanded input. And uh, I developed a PID loop to figure out how to give feedback for a closed loop system to make the motor do what I want it to. So we'll just go ahead and start. So to begin with, this is our setup here. We have two Arduino Uno boards, one that has the program Garble on it, one that has the PID loop program on it, and then I also have my own software that I created that sends all the commands to Garble, and Garble tells the motor what to do. So all this does is, like I said here, it just sends a command, the S and whatever RPM we want it to uh, rotate at. And then it turns the spindle on with the M3 command. Then after a time period, it sends the M5 command, turning it back off. And then it just repeats the process over and over again until I shut off power. All right, so to start the program, I'm just using the same software. We've introduced the lead controller. I've modified it slightly to introduce the commands to turn the spindle on and off over and over again in a loop. So here we're just going to go ahead and connect. And then as soon as I hit the reset button, the motor will turn on a few seconds afterwards. So here we go, reset. Now we're asking it to do 6,000 RPM and we have a tool to confirm that it is moving at 6,000 RPM. Uh, this is just a laser that measures how fast it's spinning. So here we have 5,940. So it's pretty accurate within plus or minus 100 roughly for the commanded RPM of 6,000. So we're just doing a longevity test to make sure the motor we've chosen can handle turning off and on a bunch of times. Just doing a little bit of quality assurance to make sure what we're going to be introducing here soon will actually work in the field. So that's all I'm doing today is testing the router motor which we'll be using to turn the spindle on and off. 
I uh, hope you guys are having a good day, and we'll talk to you later. Hey everybody, um, I just wanted to kind of run through a couple of the things that we're doing today. Uh, today we're running parts on the Puma and you got um, Max was telling you earlier about what's going on there. I'll uh, run some Delrin bushings. That was something that we were going to make an injection mold out of, but we've got the time on the lathe, so we might as well just run them and uh, get that out. Turns out it's pretty fast, so we're just probably going to keep it that way. Uh, one other thing that we're working on right now is the low profile vices. Uh, Caspian's been working on that all day. Uh, it's literally something that every day we go home, we come back and there's more and more orders of. So we're like, we just can't get them in stock. So if you want one, uh, check online now because chances are they're probably not gonna be here long. Uh, and uh, the last thing that we're working on is we were asked by the casting company to make um, the base mold out of aluminum because they're, um, they don't believe the lifespan of the wood mold will make it through what we need to have. So what I've been working on over the last two weeks is we did a slight mo design modification on this. And uh, for the most part, you wouldn't notice it until you, unless you compared them side by side. But what we did is we made bigger fillets on the inside so that we could use a half inch end mill. And then we also added the corners. We made those a much bigger so that we could use the um, three degree taper end mill. And uh, that allows us to just go right in, cut everything, and now we can match the parts. And essentially what we're doing here is we're making a layer cake. We've got the big match plate base on the bottom here. Then we'll have another section, which is the feet then another section which is the middle then we have the dovetail section which we just finished up here that'll be on the top here and we've got a small section that's actually in the middle right now getting ready to get cut and that's the the column perch and uh, that all when it's all put together we'll lock it all together and it should be plus or minus probably two thousandths of an inch that's what I'm measuring right now so putting it all together locking it in will get us in plus or minus two thousandths then what we'll do is we'll go and break in all the edges and we'll sand everything flush any gaps that we have anything like that we'll fill with JB weld and then we'll just once again sand it so it's nice and smooth so they won't have any problems at the pattern company uh, at the um, casting company with this pattern and what this is is it's called a match plate and uh, Mr. Pete, um, he did a very good uh, video on match plates and how they're used and how to do, uh, how to make a match plate in, uh, uh, in, in the whole process there. It basically just simplifies the casting process. So they're able to make our parts much faster. In the end, it's better for us. It's better for them because there's best, less uh, uh, hand labor involved in it or manual labor, but it's better for us because again, they're not charging us that up price per part to uh, do a manual labor operation. So at this point, what we're doing is we're just knocking out all the parts by tomorrow this will all be assembled and it should go out uh, either the end of day tomorrow or Wednesday morning and uh, we should be getting the castings and we're actually getting the first batch of castings sometime this week so we can start machining on those and getting all of our speeds and feeds and everything down while they machine the rest or they uh, cast the rest of our casting uh, lot that we we asked for so outside of that that's about all we've got um, so come back and check us out next time